G'day everyone, Paul from Small Crown Productions here and welcome to today's episode of 10 Questions with... Jennifer! <laughs> hey Jennifer, great to see you. Thanks for coming out today. No, thanks for having me. Oh, my absolute pleasure. 10 questions, are you ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's All do right. it. So, first question, can you tell us three things about your childhood? About my childhood. Okay, so... Um, First thing, uh, me and my sister, we used to love stuffed toys um, and we used to keep them in the cupboard. Like mum would always say like, you know, clean your room, keep them in the cupboard. Um, and we hated keeping them in the cupboard because we hated shutting the cupboard because we thought that they would die <laughs> because they wouldn't get oxygen. Anyway, that's weird. So we'd always open it back up um, and the toys Good logic. I love it. Yeah. Uh, second one, I used to like just be like a hustler child. I remember picking like heaps of stuff from the garden, the veggie garden. I'm like, I'm going to have a market stall at the front of the house. Yeah. And we didn't have like the best producing veggie garden. So I'd take like 10 cherry tomatoes and maybe two bunches of basil. Um, and no one would buy anything. And, and then much? I sold stuff to the neighbors who sympathized with me. Brilliant. But you know, I don't think I was at that cute age anymore. I was like, and maybe I was at like, <laughs> 10. I feel like if you're like a four year old selling veggies on the side of the street, people would eat that up. Yeah, but 10, you're, you're not as cute as anymore. No, that's fair. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you sold uh, something. So you're an early entrepreneur. That's cool. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and was it three? Three. Yeah, go three. Okay. And the third one was. Oh. <laughs> oh, at, I remember at my primary school, I started an eco club and I was like, let's like start this environmental club. And at lunchtime, I was like trying to gather all the groups, like let's pick rubbish out of the bins. That's not recyclable and recycle it. And no one wanted to do it, obviously, because lunchtimes are for fun. Right. And here I am with like this big stick going through the bins, picking out things that aren't recyclable. <laughs> Did you get horrible nicknames because of that? Well, not really, uh, but then my last name is Jennifer Laycock and I got horrible nicknames from that. So oh, well, that's let's, a whole other uh, story. Let's not dwell on that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's too funny now. <laughs> Love it. So, yeah. So, what was the first thing that you remember performing in? Performing in was a show in grade seven and I was really shy at school and everyone, after I performed it, people were like, we didn't know you talked. Um, and I was like, oh, well I do. And it was, I can't remember. It was some type of terrible musical and I was a rubber and I remember singing a song. Oh, oh, we're a nasty gang of robbers. And that's all I remember. Um, clearly not a singer, but that's the first thing I remember performing. In. I'm very curious about who wrote that song now. <laughs> yeah, it was called, I think it was a hundred years musical 100 year rock i don't know something like that too easy all right um what type of work do you usually produce these days work that i usually produce well i run a company called art for earthlings and basically it's an environmental theater company um which we try to inspire and um motivate people to want to create environmental change in their lifestyle so we produce uh comedy shows we try and make it all comedy and really ridiculous so it's not preachy and that people want to have fun about learning this oh, yeah. um this kind of stuff and we also produce within that we produce workshops uh teaching people how to do like make their own uh, bin liners make their own uh cleaning products all this kind of stuff and we also do uh roving things so we take characters to tree planting and like running around with the kids trying to encourage them to do that but we try our demographic that we try to reach is like from children to adults so we believe yeah. it's a message that everyone needs to learn so yeah. yeah that's probably the stuff i try to produce the most at the moment that's brilliant and so your whole company is just focused on that type of work yeah yeah we call art for earthlings and that's what we we try yeah. to dedicate with we do a lot of stuff with the, um, uh, before this year, uh, we were doing a lot of stuff <laughs> with, um, 
Yeah, before the world broke, we were doing a lot of stuff with uh, the council and we would go do Splendour in the Grass, all different kind of festivals and um, corporate Brilliant. events as well and sometimes in schools as well. So, yeah, it, it really like I created the platform and it really just like creates so many different opportunities within itself um, to work with heaps of different people. Yeah. Which is fun. Oh, yeah. it, it's, it's a great message and it's one that's, you know, it's a really hot topic and yeah. it's clever that you're building, you know, comedy shows around that that's going to help give people an easy in to, to hearing the message that they need to hear about that. So brilliant yeah. idea. Well done. Yeah. Thanks, that's Paul. Awesome. Nah, that's very cool. All right. Nice and easy one. Yeah. Favourite colour? Favourite colour? Green. Oh, green. Two for two. You're the green. second person. That like, <laughs> there you go. Oh, nice. Uh, did you have any kind of performance or um, producing idol when you were growing up? Who did you kind of look up to from a producing or performing point of view? Mm, I'm not sure. I feel like later in the life, I really look up to a group called the Travelling Sisters who make their own oh, show. Yeah. Um, they're really fantastic. Have you seen their show? Uh, I've seen snippets of some stuff. Yeah. Yeah, um, I really like them. And, yeah, I always, it's not really like someone, I always looked up to the teacher, Golier, Philippe Golier. Oh, yeah. um, and so I went over and I trained with him. Um, and I thought that, like, that was really awesome. Like, I loved my time there. And performer, did you say performers and producers? Uh, or either one. Or, or anyone. Both. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's pretty yeah, good. I think at, at currently I really like the Travelling Sisters. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they do some fun yeah. work. They're great. They do. They do. Oh, that's brilliant. Um, what got you into producing? I mean, obviously you, you talked before about having a, a real environmental kind of mindset when you're at school. So that's clearly led to yeah. the development of the company that you've set up. So what what is yeah. it about that that really captured you? What What got you into that? at an early age? Well, I guess I was lucky enough because I think it's like, it is like a hard thing to take on living this like eco conscious life, but I was lucky enough to have a mother who was very interested in it. And from a young age, we were learning about um, seeds and we were learning about um, trees and animals and all this kind of stuff. So we definitely grew an appreciation to it naturally. So we spent a lot of time outside and um, exploring and adventuring that way. Um, and then I think I just always wanted to, I saw that people were using plastic bags. I saw all these things and I had this like built up frustration and it definitely like made me like quite angry and I didn't know what to do. And I try to convince my friends not to, you know, say yes to that plastic straw or all these different things. So I was like, like, what do I, how do I teach people that like, this isn't the best way to live for the environment. So out of frustration, one day I just got my laptop and I was like, I'm writing, sorry, I just dropped my phone. Um, I'm writing this show and I just like wrote a 10 minute show for short and sweet festival. And I wrote it in like, two hours and I was like, oh, this is fun. And that's what stemmed like the, the show um, stemmed from that like 10 minute piece. Brilliant. Um, and yeah, I think it was just out of like frustrated frustration. And then I was like, Oh, and when I started doing this show, I was like, Oh, I can make comedy. Um, and people like love to laugh. Yes. People don't love to be told what to do, No. but they love to laugh. So I was like, yeah. if I can make it them laugh and make it so ridiculous that maybe afterwards they're like, oh, that was really funny, but what was that about? And thinking about it that way. Yeah, that's, that's really than, clever. Yeah, because I had tried to write environmental shows beforehand because the company existed before this show existed. Yeah. Um, and I found it really hard to... Um, get all these facts into the show and yeah. get all these messages, but still make it really enjoyable and not like push people away who are a bit sensitive about the topic. Brilliant. Ah, it's clever. Yeah. Love it. Love it. So, so do you, do you grow your own food? So how I like 
um, practice environmental conservation in my own lifestyle is I do have, I live in a house, but we don't have much space for growing food, but I grow all my own herbs and we've got capsicums growing and tomatoes growing. Um, but like, for example, my mom, she actually also is a, she's an environmental influencer. She's called No Waste, No Worries. And she teaches people to use pla- be plastic free. Um, and she teaches people that on her Facebook page. So like for the past, maybe, I don't know, four or five years, I've tried to live plastic free. So I don't buy any food that comes in plastic or very Mm -hmm. like limited. Um, I make all my own cleaning products. Um, We take a container to the butcher and the butcher puts the meat straight in. I don't eat meat. My partner does. Um, So we try and we try really reduce our waste. I haven't bought a new piece of clothing for three years. So we try and buy everything secondhand um and yeah i actually also run a vintage clothing business to try like promote sort of sustainable fashion Um, but yeah so that's what we try to do like in our own lifestyles yeah and look some of those things when you say them they go oh that like taking a container to the butcher that's really easy that's something simple that anyone could do so you know, finding those simple things that I guess little, what people would generally call life hacks to be able to make it easy. Brilliant. That's great. Yeah. Like we always take a container with us and in the container we have a glass jar, a stainless steel straw and a set of cutlery because if you go to a cafe, that's only takeaway. They put the food put in the in. tin yep. and then the juice in the glass jar and then oh, we brilliant. have our own cutlery too. So yeah, just little things like that. Love it. Love yeah. it. Yeah. All right. So, um, well, what is your favorite food? My favorite food. Oh, man. I'm on this like health journey at the moment because I have allergies and I can't eat like anything. So <laughs> I think about food all the time. <laughs> um, but my, oh, my favorite food is, <sighs> I think I love to eat nachos with lots of things on the top. Yeah, beans and cheese. And avocado, lots of that. No, no, no. no you're not an avocado. Paul! Sorry, I can't be That is a crime. You can't <laughs> eat avocado at all? I just don't like it. I just do not like it. Oh, my it's, goodness. It's really I frustrating, think... though, because everyone that I know calls on me to buy them for them because I apparently have the magic touch when it comes to buying ripe avocados. <laughs> So I can pick a perfect avocado. I just won't eat it, which to the family and friends who eat the avocados is very, very fine for them. They're more than happy. That's so funny. You could start a side hustle of like being (laughs) called the avocado picker. (laughs) (laughs) www.avocadopicker.com. Because it is a challenge finding a a good avocado or like you cut it open and you're like, is this going to be brown? Yeah. So. Yeah, so that's that's my uh, party trick apparently. So yeah, yeah. that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've all got to have one. So <laughs> yeah, what's your favorite food? Oh, so much. <laughs> yeah, um, I have to say, generally the thing like if I could just sit and eat it all day, it would be just really great flavors of ice cream. Yeah, oh, you get some really great kind of dense ice cream flavors. Like ah ah, so good. Have you had ice cream at Messina? No. You need to go to get ice cream there. Yeah, it's really good. All right. Noted. It's very good. Noted. Noted. <laughs> All right. Plastica Fantastica is the show that you have at the Wynnum Fringe Festival. So tell us a little bit about yes. that. Okay. So Plastic Fa- uh, Plastica Fantastica is a show that was written by, uh, uh, written by myself and my partner, Nicholas, um, helped me also, and he directed the show. And it's about a girl named Nunny and Nunny loves plastic so much. So the the catchphrase is she loves it more than her mum and her future husband combined. And um, she like, she definitely has a plastic addiction. Like she cling wraps her bananas. She um, double bags her milk bottle when she goes to the supermarket. She just loves plastic so much. And her ultimate dream is to become a Tupperware lady. Um, but then she finds out that she's allergic to the one thing that she loves most in the world. 
I'm not going to say what, but you know what? what? Don't say what. Um, So she has to try and live her life without that thing. Um, And it's a play basically how we're so like, it's a parody. Sorry. It's a parody on how we're so uh, reliant on plastic, even though we might not subconsciously know that. Realize it. Um, Yeah. 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 So it's very ridiculous. Awesome. It's very weird. That's the disclaimer. And how long does um, how long's it run for? What's the runtime on the show? I think the runtime is 50 minutes. Yeah, 50 minutes. Cool. And who's it kind of mostly appeal to, do you find? It, we've had, I've done the show like in all different places. So I've, I've, I've done the show in a high school yep. and it appealed to grade seveners. And then I've done the, the show in Adelaide fringe this year. And that had a lot of different audience members. So yep. I would say anyone from like the age of 15 and up. Yep. And anyone yeah. that likes a good laugh by the sounds of it. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone who likes a good laugh or seeing something that is, yeah, a bit weird. Brilliant. I fell off the stage once <gasps> in Adelaide fringe. That's such a like, yeah, I was, I was performing in Adelaide Fringe at the start of the year and I fell off the stage. I slipped over oh, no. and I like literally like, like jumped into the audience. And then I think I like, I don't know if I hit my head or something, but I looked up and the audience members were looking down at me. Like, did that just happen? Did, did you just and die? <laughs> I just pretended like it was part of the show and I got Brilliant. back up and everyone thought it was part of the show. And I looked down and my knees bleeding. Oh, and my skirt is split. And I was like, oh, this is a mess. But yeah, that happened. Show must it won't happen at Wynnum. <laughs> no, it won't happen at Wynnum. How tall was that stage that you fell off? I have to ask. Um, I think it was maybe just under a metre. Uh, it's not, not the worst that you could have fallen no, off. No, not funny. the worst. Yeah. yeah, not the worst. Brush it off. You're good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I was good. <laughs> Love it. Well, if people wanted to connect with you, I'll put the link to the show and the tickets uh, in the mm-hmm. descriptions below. Um, but if someone wanted to connect with you via social media or website, where would they go? How would they find you? Sure. So you can go to our website, Art for Earthlings, and that will have all the details about the company. So that's Art for F O R Earthlings E A R T H L I N G S. Um, and then you can head uh, to my personal Instagram, uh, which is Jennifer with the two N's dot N with two N's dot 95. Perfect. Great. And I'll link all that up down below as well. Well, Jennifer, thank you so much for chatting today. Really appreciate your time. No, thank you. Have thank a great you. day. You too. Talk to you soon. See you guys at Win and Fringe. Yeah, see Bye. you there.